Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Electric Samba Project. This time, we're going to, to a road trip to Solvang, California, which is about a 300 mile round trip. So that's a long trip. There's a lot of stuff that has to be done to the Samba. So while getting ready for this trip, what we have to do is put all the windows in the Samba because obviously we can't we can do local, you know, trips around the corner here, even to Long Beach and stuff. But when you're talking about 300 miles, then you have to put windows. So you can't just, uh, you know, keep rolling around with all the wind in your face for hours and hours on end. And my wife is going and my dogs are going with me this time. So we have to do all that stuff. Now, while we're doing uh, the windows, you run into a lot of problems. You know, the Samba wasn't quite ready to receive the windows. Um, because I hadn't really been thinking about that you know that's stuff that happens once you paint the car and uh, this car is quite not ready to have paint go on but uh, we're gonna have to kind of skip ahead and put the windows just for this trip then come back and then when we need to get ready for paint take them back off and then paint the Samba and then put them back on you know but what we did is we had the, all the uh, frames of these windows, we had them sent out and be powder coated so that they're kind of ready to go. Once you put them together, put them in the Samba and take them back out, they can be put right back in. And they're already the color that the car is gonna end up being, which is the blue is the original color of the Samba. I was missing two windows, so basically uh, I had to come up with some way of coming up with those two glasses. You know, we're under like super tight deadline here. We got like tomorrow and that's it. Uh, we have to be on the road Saturday, I don't know, sometime. So we don't have all the parts. So uh, you, you can notice here there's a different color. It's because we stole them from Danny's bus. She doesn't know yet, but we just took them off her bus. Hey! And you know, it's just gonna be for a while. And sometimes you have to do that when you're in a tight schedule. You know, I also had to throw in the uh, uh, canvas, you know, to cover the big giant hole in the top of my roof. I haven't even looked at those parts. They're all rusty, they're just bent. I don't even know if they're gonna go on there, so I have to kind of just throw them on there and see if I can just buy some kind of material and then put them there, because I didn't really want to spend the money to go and get the real canvas and then kind of get it all dirty while we're putting it on you know rusty parts and stuff so um, that's what I spent the uh, Friday before taking off doing that so so the plan was really for me to get ready and leave an hour before everyone uh, there's this app called PlugShare and it actually has all the charging points that you can get for EVs, you know. There was a guy somewhere in Carpinteria that has a NEMA 1450, which is a, a big plug. It's the ones that you typically will find in an RV park. And they can do 200, 220 volts, 50 amps. It says you can just pull up, plug in there and charge your vehicle. The plan was to get there an hour before everyone charge for an hour and then everyone else would meet me there and then we would join them and take off to solving from there. It didn't quite work because once I was on the road, uh, my 12 volt battery that I had been depleting all the rest of the days by having the radio on and the lights on while we were working on the bus here at night, uh, didn't really have time to recharge. So I had to stop before then and kind of let that battery charge and kind of let the sun come out so I wouldn't have to use my, my lights because those are the ones that draw more power um, before I could make it to the charging point, you know. Uh, the thing that kind of worked out for me was that everyone uh, was running behind because there was an accident. Steve uh, flipped his bus or he got hit. As a result of that, he, his bus flipped on his side and it was a major accident. It took about three hours for that to kind of clear it. So it kind of worked out for me because then it allowed me to get to that point and then charge and by the time that everyone arrived there, I had plenty, plenty of energy in my batteries charging. I even got to meet the guy that owns the business where the plug is at. It was just randomly picked because it was at a perfect location and it was the right plug. And when he arrived there, he seemed to know a lot about me and 
turns out he's a fan of the Samba and stuff, and he's been following the videos and stuff, so he kind of knew who I was and was very surprised to find me there on a Saturday morning charging on his plug, you know? Uh, he gave me a tour of his shop and stuff. He's a uh, real Richard uh, Hugo. He's a, you know, pretty nice gentleman there and stuff. So let's hit the road. I think uh, I got enough charge to make it all the way to Solving from here on, so let's do it. Okay. After that, we kind of took off and route to Solving, and it, it, I'm happy to report that the Samba did great going up the hills. I mean, I was pulling 400 amps for continuous for, you know, 20 minutes going up a seven degree grade uh, mountain, I, like nothing. I mean, this thing, uh, the, the low end torque on the motor is great. It just pushes and it keeps going on forever. It was keeping up with all the buses that had like high performance engines. Now even Gabriel has a high performance little engine with dual carbs and all this stuff. And I think out of the whole group, the only one that kind of staying kind of behind is uh, the egg bus because it, it still has an original engine. 1600 it's unmodified kind of thing so uh, we were keeping up with those high performance engines uh, I was still trying not to go too fast to conserve energy going up the mountain but you know I didn't have to I, I had a lot of more headroom to go and then we finally Around 10 in the morning, we made it to Solding, and the show was pretty good, you know. It was a nice little park, and, uh, and uh, there's a lot of cars there, a lot of nice cars. They were kind of waiting for us. Uh, they were surprised to see the electric Samba making it all the way there, you know. A lot of the questions were like, did you, did you trailer up here? And it was like, no, this thing actually drove 170 miles to make it out here. So that was uh, that was a great date for the to go to the Solving Show. After that, some of us went out and just kind of hang out at a place and a bar and drink and stuff. While I decided to go and eat dinner at Anderson's Pea Soup, which is a famous place that's up there, and I've been there before. Um, it was kind of weird to be sitting there and thinking I came all the way up here in my electric samba this is a, it's a new feeling i never thought i'd be that far away from home in an electric samba you know? but the plan was to go and charge across the street you know um, there was an rv place there that has a nema 1450 plug and the problem is that when i showed up every single spot in that rv park was taken because they had a show they had some kind of event there i really didn't know what i was going to do because I was depending on that, one of those plugs being open so I could charge. I only had a few hours to charge and it didn't take long for me to notice that some of the people from the VW show were also at this show, which was a classic RV show. Any vehicle, recreational vehicle from, from the 50s or whatever, that's the show to go. If you know, some of these Sambas are actually converted into RV vehicles, they're, they're campers and stuff. So some of those people were there. And, you know, I pulled up there and the first guy that I see with the Samba, a splitting BW, I just asked him, hey, I, I, my car is an electric, can I use your plug? They say, sure enough, pull up here. That so was taken care of, you know, we pulled up there and plugged in and we were on our way charging. So, problem fixed. After that, after a few hours, the plan was to go and spend the night at a campsite next to the Lake Kachuma, about 10 miles away. But we missed our exit, and if you've been on that road, you know that it's just pretty hairy going down there at night. Modern cars are going really fast, and it's uh, up and down the hills, up and down, and it's, it's pretty intense driving. So um, I couldn't really find a spot to turn around and come back, and uh, by the time I found a spot, we were way down, and I didn't want to spend the extra energy it would take to go back. So we just decided to go ahead and go to Carpinteria and spend the night over there while charging. And then, you know, get up sometime in the morning and take off. But the problem was that when we got there, I plugged my bus into that same plug that I had plugged in the morning. And the charger didn't work, you know. And 
So I took out everything and start messing with it. And no matter what I did, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to get it running. So I decided to just go to sleep. And then hopefully in the morning, I would wake up with a fresh outlook and maybe find some kind of way to make it home. 112 miles away from home. And I probably only had about 50 miles worth of uh, energy and batteries. So we, I wasn't going to make it home. And I just had no idea how we were going to do it. The next morning, we woke up and um, we went to eat breakfast at a little town there. Um, I went to the hardware store and kind of, I figured that I had a perfectly good plug in the wall that had energy to deliver. And all I had to do was figure some way to get that energy into the batteries. Um, so I thought I was going to try and design a, a brute force charger which is basically just a charger uh, with just a diode with just a rectifying diode that would make the 240 volts into DC and then get the uh, DC into the batteries you know just directly um, it's kind of risky you gotta kind of you know have a way to safely um, control the energy flow from one side from the plug into the batteries you know and that's all a charger is is basically you know um, but you know, desperate times call for desperate measures, so I thought I was going to do it. Now, uh, once I kind of did all the parts and uh, I decided to use only one leg of the 220 volts, so it's only 120. Um, I had, the voltage was a little bit off, a few volts, it was like 150 volts on the wall. And my battery has to be 126 volts maximum. Uh, but I decided to kind of go ahead and do it. the cables were rattling all over the place and we smelled some smoke and we tripped the breaker I realized that that wasn't gonna happen we, you know we just you just can't do it like that you need some high some way to control the energy um, at that point then the, the rest of the group kind of joined us back and we decided to just drive with them we had to leave the summer there for a few hours that was our best plan because uh, the tow truck wanted way too much money. We ended up doing that, coming home, driving 112 miles back, picking up the Samba and driving 112 miles back again with the Samba. And somewhere around 11 o'clock at night, we pulled up into our garage here. And uh, I was happy that the Samba was finally home, but kind of disappointed that half of the trip ended up not happening just because of that stupid charger. The charger is not the first time that gives us trouble. It's, you know, been through a couple of these chargers before and I just I'm not ready to give up on this charger just because it's a DIY and the size and the power that it puts out is amazing you know it's 12 kilowatts and stuff but it's not something you can just pick up and put it on there and plug it in and go without any problem I figure that the thing that killed my charger was the fact that I was pushing full power and there was not adequate maybe uh, airflow through it and so some of the parts cooked up in there and some of the sensors got burned and stuff, and maybe even the IGBTs. This charger works perfect when you put it on your lap table. There's adequate flow, but as soon as you put it in a car where it's you know cramped, and then the airflow is not enough. So I'm just I'm currently designing one that is going to be uh, liquid cool, like the one I used to have before, and that way you can keep it running cool even if you're pulling you know full power to it. So that's the plan. If that doesn't work, then I guess I'm just going to go ahead and buy a a store-bought uh, charger which are typically way more expensive and way bigger and just you know less fun that was this trip uh, we had a lot of fun and uh, you know we had a lot of success mixed with a lot of failures all right guys so this is this episode of the electric samba project um, if you notice that I'm not able to kind of keep doing at the same rate as I was doing before uh, in a weekly basis but you know we're we're still working on the Samba we'll do it as often as we can and um, so check out Win Stacy game she also did an episode on this trip and her angle on that she was a passenger on the uh, egg bus um, which also has 
its own uh, series of adventures. Uh, we're always working on that car also, so check those other channels. Um, so stay tuned for uh, the next episode, whenever that is.